So I was in the middle of packing to move back to Nashville and halfway through, I kind of thought, no video today. I'm sweaty, I'm tired, Ugh. And there's literally like, what's left of my apartment is this. It was the last thing to be packed. But then I had a power moment where I decided to pull through and get this video out because I want to, I'm excited to do it, and I have the time and energy to get it done because I'm not actually driving up to Nashville until tomorrow. So let's dive in to the stand by Stephen King. Now, yesterday I did a kind of love letter to Stephen King's writing that I'm pretty proud of. Not a lot of you watched it, which, you know. <laughs> I'm not hurt, I'm not upset about it. So I'm gonna pull from some of the things I said in that video. I'm gonna go ahead and skip over praising some of the features of the book that I felt were really fantastic because I already mentioned them while already talking about Stephen King in general in the other video. So please go check that one out if you have not already. But talking about The Stand, this is a book either people have read and they love it or they haven't read it because it's huge and they just don't want to put in the time and effort. I've yet to see anyone in my comment section or on Goodreads in my feed who has read this book and not been a little bit obsessed with it. Although now that I think about it, there's a third group. There's the did not finish or the DNF group. And these are people who just weren't used to the Stephen King slog and didn't get all the way through. And to my Dark Tower fans who have not read The Stand yet, you'll probably want to because there's a character that carries over. I don't want to spoil it. I tried to avoid spoiling it in the Stephen King video. I just did, but a lot of people in the comments were like, oh, didn't you know? I, I was trying to keep that under wraps, but the comment section is filled with it. And what The Stand is, is another kind of surreal, semi-fantasy, not fantasy, more grounded human story book from Stephen King that walks the line into horror, but never really dives all the way into it. Though there are many incredibly creepy scenes throughout The Stand. Basically the entire sequence in the jail cell, that'll stick with me until I die. If I had to target the weakest elements of The Stand, the latter third I wasn't a big fan of until post what a lot of people would think would be the conclusion. And I like everything that happened after that. I thought there were some really great character moments and wrapping up a plot line that I actually really found myself invested in. But this does fall into the Stephen King trap of having an ending and then continuing on for 50 pages. But I actually really loved those 50 pages more so then keeping it spoiler free, the main conflict of the last third of the book. I really enjoyed all the character building and one character in particular stands out the strongest here to me and that is Harold. Harold is a character, again, keeping it as spoiler free as I can. You're not meant to like, you're meant to sympathize with in a very begrudging, resentful way. It's curious how he's written and I found myself loving to hate him. I know people who think like Harold. I know people who are that I hate the world, everyone's against me, even though they're just kind of an awful person mentality. Those people who you knew if they just stopped being so angry, if they just stopped thinking everyone was out to get them, they could be a really awesome person. That's Harold. I'm not going to talk about the arc of his character or where he ends up, but his setup and establishment really solidify a strong characterization there of someone we all know. Stu was also incredibly well fleshed out, and there was really no weak characters. There were characters I liked more than others, but everyone across the board who took center stage at any point was given enough depth that you were invested in what happened to them. Even the people who failed. And there are a lot of people who fail to take a stand. I'm proud of myself for that one. My hands are dry. Overall, I'm putting the stand at either the best or second to best Stephen King book I have read yet. So far, the order for me is kind of a tie between the stand and it, followed very close by The Shining and then The Dark Tower kind of wiffle waffling in here with The Outsider mixed in somewhere along those lines. I will be reading quite a bit more Stephen King in the future so if you are a Stephen King fan look out for that but from here we're gonna go ahead and jump into spoiler filled territory for The Stand so if you have not read the book and plan to go ahead and click off the video. If you have not read the book but you do not plan to because you don't like Stephen King but you like my face feel free to stick around, around, around. and of course those of you who have read The Stand, let's go ahead and start the discussion. Randall Flagg, yes, he's the man in black from The Dark Tower. I was trying to not mention that in my Stephen King video, but everyone and their mother was very excited to point that out to me. I've been diving into these Wikipedia pages and how everything's linked. That was one of the first things that jumped out to me. I do find his characterization between what I've seen in Dark Tower and what is here in The Stand to be 
crazily different, but I haven't gotten super far into the Dark Tower. I do plan to in the future. So I'm not convinced this is bad writing by Stephen King. There's obviously a reason for this drastic difference. He would not write something that is that inconsistent. I just know that with how amazing an author he is. I did find the weakest part of this book to be once the town is established and they start having this feud with the people in Las Vegas, that whole clashing did not vibe with me. The council was kind of interesting, but once the threat was so distant and I could kind of see what was gonna happen coming, I found myself getting less and less interested with the overall plot, but the characters kept me still engaged. I never wanted to put it down because I still felt so related to everyone, whether it's the forming hatred of Harold, who I found to be sympathetic at times, but then he went so far over the edge I lost all sympathy for him. Or Nadine, who again is someone you are hoping will redeem themselves, but does not. And then there's the ever lovable Stu, someone who is fair and kind and one of those typical Stephen Kings. This is the good guy, the person you should be backing. I really did think Stu was gonna die from when they left him and at the nuclear blast. I thought Stu's not gonna make it, but apparently he was far enough from the nuclear blast that he was fine, which Okay, I can believe that. They didn't kill the dog, also great. I thought at multiple points the dog was gonna die and I would have been very upset, but he didn't, because Stephen King's not a jerk. So I appreciate that, King. Please don't kill dogs. Please don't kill dogs. Please don't kill dogs. Please don't kill dogs. Don't kill dogs. And then there's the mentally handicapped Tommy, another character I found myself really caring about. As a dyslexic person, I would love to live in his world where everything is spelled M-O-O-N. Boy, that would be easier for me. M-O-O-N. That spells hobby. But he was so incredibly endearing and someone who you could 100% get behind. I did not agree with the council's decision to send him off to go and be in danger and be a spy. That I did not agree with, but that's because I'm not a believer in the supernatural. Even if I was in a situation like the people in the stand where I'd probably still be that guy who denies being in this, but that's a flaw in my character, I guess. Even with overwhelming evidence, I probably couldn't accept paranormal self-realization there. But my real concluding thoughts about The Stand are, wow, this is really an incredible journey. And that's what The Stand really is at its core. It's a magnificent execution. So a lot of times it feels like maybe authors are rushing through certain things and it kind of de-invests you in the overall storyline. And yeah, the stand is gargantuan in size, but it didn't bother me because I really loved going at this slow and steady pace, never really being able to predict what was happening, especially at the beginning, less so later on. And it just was great. It felt like this whole journey, I didn't miss anything. I witnessed all the crucial parts and this really helped me build a bond, it felt like, with the characters. That's really the beauty of Stephen King's writing. He knows how to show you everything while never boring you and keeping what's important at the forefront. It's rare to find that in a horror author, a genre that's plagued, especially in cinema, with pretty shallow characters. And even still, that is a problem in the literary horror genre. Overall, I'm feeling a using a nuclear bomb to solve your problems out of 10. <laughs> One, it's one way to solve your problems, you know? It just it take, takes care right of it. Oh, Trash Man. How did I not mention Trash Man? Uh, oh, that sums up my thoughts on Trash Man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace.